Hi friends, thank you for tuning in to the Concussion Coach Podcast. I'm Bethany Lewis, the Concussion Coach. I'm a neurological occupational therapist and certified life coach, and I specialize in guiding people through their concussion recovery journey. I am passionate about helping people understand their injury, speed up their recovery, and reclaim control over their life post-concussion. The purpose of this podcast is to help increase awareness of concussions and the impact they can have on a person's life, and to bring hope to people who have suffered a concussion and those who love them. I firmly believe that sharing stories and knowledge about concussions will bring important light and understanding to this misunderstood and often invisible injury. The information in this podcast is meant to bring that awareness and hope and is not meant as medical advice. The opinions shared are those of the interviewees and my own. If you are suffering with lingering concussion symptoms, I have created a concussion coaching program specifically for you. I will be your mentor to guide you through your recovery journey, offering help with understanding and managing your symptoms, setting achievable goals, and learning how to manage your own thoughts and nervous system in order to get control over your life again. If this program sounds like something that would help you or someone you love, sign up for a free consultation. In the consultation, you'll get valuable information and resources and gain hope for your future. Sign up for your free consultation at the link in the show notes or at my website, www.theconcussioncoach.com. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Concussion Coach Podcast. Today, I have a returning guest, Becky Barnett, who joined us on episode 68 with Krista St. Germain as we discussed grief. Becky's oldest daughter, Ashley, is also joining us today, and together they will be sharing their experience and advice regarding traveling with a concussion. Ashley's high school choir took a senior trip to New York City at the end of the school year, and Becky and Ashley did such a beautiful job of planning it out and preparing to manage and mitigate concussion symptoms along the way that I thought it would be helpful for them to share their experience and what they learned. And actually, to be honest, it was my husband's idea (laughs) to have them share this, and it was a very good one because just this week I was doing a consultation with someone who's going to be traveling internationally and she was you know looking for advice and questions had questions about it and I was like oh I wish I had this podcast done already (laughs) because then I could send it to her but I think this will be really helpful information I'm excited to have you guys share some of your knowledge and learned experience here with us so thanks for being here you guys and let's I'm just going to start off by letting um, you introduce yourselves and share as much as you want to about the experience that brought you to the concussion and then we can go from there I'm Ashley and I got my concussion in a car crash on the freeway, and I've had it for almost two years now. This trip was six months. No, not six months. This, this, this trip choir was, trip? Yeah, the choir trip was, I don't remember. Like two months ago. It was two months ago, yeah. A couple months ago. Okay, and so you've been dealing with the concussion for a while, and you knew things to be careful of. So what what are some of the main symptoms that you were concerned about that you experienced that you were concerned about as you were considering and planning for this trip? The noise sensitivity was a big one. I was at the point where I couldn't be in a room with like more than 10 people and like have it not be painful. And the choir trip that I think there were 60 people in our choir plus New York city is super loud. Yeah. So noise was noise was the biggest one. Mm -hmm. What other, what other symptoms were you, um, just like in general? Rest breaks. Uh, I was worried about elevators actually, as funny as that sounds, um, overscheduling and exhaustion, choosing which activities to keep and which ones to not go to because I couldn't go to all of them and visual overstimulation and transportation. Sorry, mom handed me the list. So I got, I got a lot. (laughs) That's good. So it sounds like the, the symptoms though are the, it sounds like fatigue noise sensitivity, visual uh, overstimulation, and just kind of just general overstim. General overstimulation, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. Vestibular played into it as well. Boats, elevators, ramps getting on and off of airplanes. Oh, Mm. that's a story. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. All right, well, let's let's jump into it. I know um, as we because we talked together before your trip and after your trip, so I got to kind of hear you guys planning it out. And then I got to hear kind of a summary of how what worked and what didn't work. And I think that will be really helpful for people to hear. But let's kind of maybe break it down by different segments of the trip that you'd planned for and what was what worked for you, what was helpful or not helpful, or, or what was surprisingly challenging that you didn't anticipate, those kinds of things. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think the first one that if I remember right, you guys getting to like the, the travel part, the, the airport itself, as well as flying on an airplane, both of those things. Why don't we, why don't we start there? <laughs> yeah, Ready? that's a good place Go. to start. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, mom helped me carry my bag, if I remember right. 
No, I think I, I think we each dragged our own behind. We decided to check bags. We paid the extra money to check bags so that we could lessen fatigue for Ashley with dragging bags around and have my hands available to help her yeah. in case she needed it. Yeah. So that was probably step one was we just, all in all, the trip became far more expensive <laughs> by having to deal with concussion symptoms. So we checked bags and then as getting through security was a bit of a mess. Oh yeah. Cause they were like, I was wearing my hearing protection, but I, I had big gun range level hearing protection that I was wearing in the airport just to keep me sane. And they said, you can't wear that through security. And mom talked to them. She's like, Hey, she's got a sound sensitivity. If she takes those off, she's going to be in a lot of pain. And they said, whatever. And so, yeah, she used all the special words, all the like disability and like, and they were like, the best we can do is like, get it through security fast and like put it through the x-ray machine first so that you're like, minimize the time that you're without it. But they weren't like, but they didn't let me wear it through the x-ray machine, which had lovely beeping. Yeah, I took it off and like, they kept giving me instructions and I couldn't understand their instructions. Like, (laughs) because I didn't have my hearing protection on and I was so overstimulated by all the noise and they'd have to tell me things like two or three times. And I was like really trying to focus. I was doing my best, but yeah. If we were going back in time, we would have her use like a smaller profile hearing protection. That's plastic. Yeah. Um, There's a a type called loop that fits right in the ear and can covered by your hair, like dampens a lot of noise and wouldn't, trigger it's a metal plastic. detector yeah so that would have been the strategy for getting through security it's but enough. we didn't learn that yeah that go around okay well thank you for sharing that was it in the line for the security line that it was an issue or just actually going through like the metal detector that that was what part of security was it? just going through the metal detector part okay which happens really fairly quick you can get through there in like 45 seconds yeah. to like here's my stuff, here's my hearing protection, and then you walk through, but then you have to wait for the hearing protection to go through the conveyor belt. Yeah. Mm. And it didn't get on the conveyor belt early because she was wearing it as long as possible, so it got bumped to the end of the line. So then it's like, it just took longer to get that hearing protection back. And it took longer for me to get through the metal detector itself because I was having such a hard time processing their instructions to me. Mm. And were you already through, Becky? Were you not able to, like, help translate that for her? I don't remember. I was really close by. They just had a whole lot of they just didn't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We decided early on, part of our planning for the trip, we decided that we weren't going to use words like concussion. We were going to use words like traumatic brain injury and disability. Mm -hmm. Because those get people's attention better. If you say, my daughter has a disability from her traumatic brain injury. They tend to listen more unless they're TSA employees and then they don't care. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is good to know. And actually really smart. I think that's a uh, good advice to use those words instead of concussion. Cause you're right. People don't, they don't get it. People don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Super interesting. Okay. We sorry. made it through security and then there's the long, long walks down all the places. Mm-hmm. I had offered to Ashley to have her get a ride. Uh, but she actually felt like sometimes the walking was sort of beneficial. So yeah. she did airport walking. And then we were supposed to meet up with this huge group of choir students and chaperones. And they're all chatty, chatty and excited. And that was not a really great environment for her. So we found the group and then went just like within sight of where everybody was. But where it was a little quieter. With a little bit quieter and far fewer people. So that's less visual stimulation and less just overall movement and Mm -hmm. people wouldn't approach her and hi ashley it's so good to see you and i can't believe we're going to new york oh my gosh this is gonna be so fun it's like (laughs) the conversations that she she couldn't participate in we just removed her and Mm -hmm. then i sat over there with her Mm -hmm. so that when they started loading the plane yeah we could she was the one paying attention so that i wasn't like stressing and constantly are they getting on without me are they getting on without me yeah see guys so many good points that you're bringing up here. This is thank you for that. I remember when we were talking about this beforehand, you were thinking about like wearing a hoodie so that it would like maybe decrease some of that peripheral vision like mm-hmm. motion stuff as well as the 
doing as like, and that might help also block some of the noise. wearing a hat. Okay. Oh, wears wait. a baseball cap like a lot of the time. Yeah. I didn't it bring it to New York because I didn't want to lose it. Hmm. I would have been wearing a like a beanie type hat. I think you did bring a sweatshirt to try and like a hoodie to try yeah. and block out some of the. I think that I brought my. I think I was layered up really well. I, I think I just had, brought a different. I think baseball I, cap. No, there I was, was something. There was something. There was like a hat or a hood, and Maybe. I think I pulled it over my eyes. That was just, okay. Yeah, I think you did. You talked about wearing a beanie and having the hood, and like that way you could pull the the beanie down over your ears and or your eyes if you needed to <laughs> yeah. have the hood over. Yeah. So those are just ideas that I thought were were smart and worth throwing out there as well. But you may, it sounds like you used something maybe, but we don't remember, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. It was <laughs> kind of chaotic. And How then was- when it was time to get onto the plane, I just stayed re- really close to her. Sometimes when Ashley's overstemmed, like to a big, big way, then she starts to not be able to keep her balance well on her feet. Yeah. And so and I so was Mom just right there next to her so that she could hold onto my arm. Mm-hmm. And then as you walk down towards oh. the airplane, just bef- you get to like the end of a ramp and then you're on like this movable ramp before you step onto the airplane. Yeah, that little tube thing that yeah. goes. And she has, do you want to tell Yeah, I'll that? tell the story. Uh, I was walking on it and all of a sudden I didn't feel good. And at first I didn't realize why. And then, and like, uh, my balance was all wonky and I was gripping to the handrail, like for dear life. And I realized that it was moving like ever so slightly and no one else was noticing it, like, but I was, and I felt like I was on a bucking horse. And so like, by the time we got to the middle, like it got worse, like as you got further on it. And so by the time we got to the middle, I just stopped and I looked at mom and I'm like, I, I need like, I need balance support or something. What did I say yeah. to you? She said something like this floor is moving and I was like oh yeah it's like a detached ramp and I said so I reassured her like you're right it's moving so hold on to my arm and Mm -hmm. hold on to the rail because what her eyes were giving her was different than what her Mm -hmm. feet were giving her and that that difference in input was messy but once she realized you did a little better once you realized Uh that it was that and once you had support on both sides Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We didn't anticipate that at all. No. Yeah. Well, that's, that is a good heads up for people to hear, I'm sure. And I love the way you explain that. Like, I, <laughs> just so everybody knows, <laughs> uh, Becky is also a physical therapist. So she, she's got a really good, like, way of understanding these things and explaining them. So this is very valuable. Thank you for that. And really interesting. I wouldn't have anticipated that either, but uh, mm-hmm. you're just so sensitive. Ashley, you just <laughs> have to feel all the things. So your yeah, body's that is definitely, yep. <laughs> so how was the flight itself? Anything that people need to be aware of for airplane travel? Uh, I would recommend getting a window seat. I did not. Um, it was an overnight flight. I didn't get any sleep. It turns out airplanes are really, really noisy. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like from the moment they turn those engines on, it's just really, really noisy. Uh-huh. I made sure that I had water. I made sure that I had food to try to keep my energy up. Because if I don't have water or food or like, if I don't take care of myself, if I don't get sleep or water or food or like, I don't know, what's like, I start shutting down. Like my symptoms start to get a lot worse. So I made sure to have water and food at least so that I could try to mitigate those symptoms. I didn't get any sleep. I tried. Did you double up on hearing protection Mm -hmm. on that flight? Yeah. The return flight went a little bit better because... Because I watched a movie, yeah. Uh, Yeah, this flight went... Yeah, I don't know how much... I kind of interrupted. The return flight was better because she was able to watch a movie. Uh Well, the the flight there was bad because I was trying to sleep and every time we hit any bout of turbulence whatsoever, my PTSD would be triggered from the car crash and I'd think that we were going to die. And Mm. that was not fun. That was not a fun way to spend that airplane trip. (laughs) <laughs> yeah to wake up yeah I, I never even fell asleep um so the return flight was better because i watched a movie and that helped with the ptsd and that helping with the ptsd helped with concussion stuff believe it or not so yeah i believe it okay that that's good to know i wonder i wonder if it would have been better for you to not even try sleeping then like if you were just been like mm-hmm. all right i'm gonna just go all in here and 
my all nighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Live and learn, right? This is, this is very helpful. Thank you for that. Um, any other airplane suggestions? Let's see. I'm trying to remember what else we had. We brought inflatable pillows on the airplane to try to sleep. The inflatable pillows came in handy a couple of times. And on the flight was one of those. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice to have something to lean on and rest on. So that was, that was good. Um, she was also sitting. I was across the aisle from her just because it was assigned seats and you don't get to pick. And I talked to the people like, anyway, they didn't let us rearrange that, but the, the people she was sitting next to were friends of ours as well. So that was nicer than staying by strangers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You can't always pick that. Companions. I'm curious, why would why would a window seat be preferable? Because then you have a wall to lean on instead of like, because I tried to like put my head down, like sleeping on a desk style with the like foldable mm-hmm. table thing that they have. And that didn't work. It hurt my neck. You're tall. So that definitely. definitely. Yeah, yeah I think. Comfortable. Yeah, it's not comfortable. You're right by the aisle. People keep coming. There's more visual stimulation. Mm. You've got people on either side of you. Having a window seat, you can shut that window and just have a blank wall and just have like a nice non-stimulating part of your environment that you can look at, which is really nice, actually. Okay. Um, so. All right. Thank you. Good to know. <laughs> All right. So so once you landed in New York City, which is a, a crazy and a busy place, um, maybe <laughs> I, I know, again, there were lots of like different things. Do you guys do you guys already have it laid out or do you want to go off of the list that I sent you earlier? Like I know there were like bus rides and the hotel and the getting around the city, all of the different segments here. What kind of clumped into a couple different categories, like transportation in general, some of the things that we did? Let me think. If we finish off the airport, then we had to go get our luggage. Yeah, oh, mom yeah. said okay. to sit down in the corner away from the noise, which was very nice of her. And then she made me eat, um, and I didn't want to. <laughs> I was feeling very crappy and like not hungry at all. But then I ate, and I felt a lot better. So, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy what you forget. <laughs> so getting food and water, and then it was it was at least quieter. It wasn't quiet, but it was quieter. Yeah. So then, I, yeah, we grabbed luggage and walked out to buses. Mom did the heavy lifting. I was so tired at that point. Uh, I don't think I could have lifted those bags if I tried. They were rolling suitcases, which is always a good idea if you have to drag suitcases around someplace. Yeah. Mm. Um, but they had to be like lifted into a bus compartment. Oh, sure. And uh, I could not do that. I could drag it, but I couldn't lift it into. Like it was my turn and I was panicking. I was like, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do it. And then mom came in and did it for me. So thank you, mom. We <laughs> joked around that I was Ashley's Sherpa. <laughs> so every person with a concussion who's traveling should probably find a Sherpa to bring along <laughs> to do the heavy lifting and to remind them to do stuff and to watch out for them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the second brain cell. <laughs> so then we hopped on the buses. It was like a travel bus. So it was a, fairly comfortable bus as far as buses can go but then there was like a 45 minute drive she was wiped out lots of hearing protection probably more food lots of people lots of people and once we got to they got to a place where they let everybody off the bus to go get breakfast and at that point she and i stayed on the bus i was super dehydrated oh we sent somebody for water and food yeah i mean we had like our dry goods granola bars and how long can granola bars and beef jerky last you right. before you're like this just isn't cutting it yeah <laughs> but when everybody left to go get breakfast she had, she finally fell asleep she laid down on the back bus seats and she fell asleep and rested for about an hour mm-hmm. and again it was kind of good to have a sherpa because you don't necessarily want to fall asleep in new york city with a bus driver that you don't really know as he drives away from the rest of the group mm-hmm. so it was good to have a have me there just from a safety perspective yeah yeah yes and the fact that you were an adult chaperone and that the director could like feel okay with like leaving me with you alone like yeah most of the chaperones that came along were assigned like four or five kids to be over and i requested that my (laughs) one kid was kid enough and please don't give me anybody else's kids to be in charge of yeah and that worked out really well Yes. Yeah, our choir director was so, so sweet about it. Like, he was, it was amazing. That's good. So we yeah. napped, she napped on the bus, and then they went, and they were, it was a choir tour. 
So the next stop was like a place to sing. And you were able to sing in that place. Mm -hmm. It was outside, which helped. It wasn't inside. Uh, It was Grant's tomb. And um, it was... The inside was super echoey and awful, but we sang outside, so it was okay. Um, So we just spent time outside after they had sang, rather than spending a bunch of time exploring the inside echoey place. She and I just hung out outside. Mm -hmm. And then they were going to do a bus tour. Like, hey, let's see all the sights of New York City on the way back to our hotel. And at that point, she and I got off of the bus at some stop and took an Uber to the hotel rather than doing the rest of the bus tour. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which was amazing. I think I fell asleep after. I didn't fall asleep in the Uber. I did fall asleep once we got back to the hotel room. And mom was amazing. She did all the checking in. She did all the heavy brain, heavy cognitive stuff. Some of the cognitive stuff at the hotel was that it's New York City, so everything goes up really high. So this hotel had like 28 floors or something, and elevators make Ashley nauseous. And yeah. so nauseous and tipsy. I look drunk. I had Probably. called well, it wipes <laughs> you out for so long. Yeah. So I had called ahead to request a lower floor. And then at the desk as we were checking in, I said, My daughter has a disability from a traumatic brain injury and so we need a floor as low to the as as, as close, close to, to the ground lobby as level possible as you can get us mm-hmm. so they got up on floor three which was good going up three levels on an elevator she can handle going up 24 not so well yeah, yeah. and then the other nice thing about floor three is if we wanted to we could take the stairs yeah and which so, we did on a regular basis yeah we skipped we mm-hmm. skipped the elevator as much as we could that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense and good advice. Very good advice. Yeah. Uh, I we'll remember see. you said something about on the on the stairs you would focus on focus point on the red pipe. Was that it on the stairs? Like you were yeah. able to, that helped. So the stairs were in a tight spiral and they were everything was painted the same shade of gray. And so between that, I would actually get and the lights were really bright. Yeah, bright. it was it was like kind of overstimulating for me, and I'm not concussed. Yeah, like walking in a circle that many times, three levels down. Mm-hmm. Yes, but yeah. there was, like, and it was like six times that you had to cross the circle because the stairs were compressed or something. So I would focus. I'd, I'd use a technique called spotting, where you focus on one thing while you're going around in a circle, and it makes you less dizzy. So yeah, if any of my fellow concussion people have to walk down a spiral staircase. <laughs> now have <it>. something <laughs> focus on was it like the in the center like focusing the thing on the it wasn't in the center it was on the side so there was like one side it was like a square spiral almost mm-hmm. and so i could see it three-fourths of the time okay. and so okay good to know it was painted bright red because it was something for like a fire mm-hmm. yeah all right excellent excellent points thank you okay Should we talk about subways <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about subways. <laughs> oh, so it was last day of the trip, I think. No, it was the second to last day of the trip. Uh, we had a performance. It was in a cathedral. And we'd been taking Uber. And this one was super far away. And Uber is expensive. And um, I said to mom, hey, I kind of want to try the subways. I just want to see how it goes. And if that works, like, that'll be great. And so right off the bat, it was a pretty bad idea. Um <laughs> We, we went down, the trains were super loud, the people were super loud, it was in an echoey place, the lights weren't super bright though, that was nice. And we didn't even see any subway rats, so that was just disappointing. Ashley <laughs> <laughs> loves animals, so finding rats in the subway would be a perk on, on <laughs> yeah. her. Yeah. I imagine that's not the case for most of our listeners, but you know, you never know. Maybe, maybe some people would also feel it it was on my bucket list and it didn't happen. Um, But anyway, every time the subway went by and like it was flashing in my peripheral vision, I just felt sick. Um, So the subway passing by her was visually overstimulating. Yeah. As just as we were waiting for the subway to come and it's loud. Yeah. And it's echoey. Anyway, we got on the subway. By then I was I wasn't talking well at that point. Like I was at the point where I was like, like I should what I should have done is said to mom, hey, I don't feel so good. Like let's take an Uber. But like by then the brain fog had set in like bad enough that mm. like I 
couldn't get those words out for the life of me. Mm. And so we got on the subway and mom asked someone to give up their seat for me, which I, boy, I, that, that kind of thing scares me because I'm young. I look like I'm fine and I'm not fine. And like, it's actually a necessary thing. So to ask a middle-aged woman to like, Hey, it was a man. Oh, it was a man. Okay. If that makes it any better or worse, but I don't know. He was very kind and gave up his seat and let her sit. But I, I again used the words, my daughter has a disability and she really needs to see, sit. Is there any chance you would give her your chair? And he did. And it was really nice of him. Yeah, it was very nice. Of and him. then it cleared out and I was able to sit next to her later. But riding the subway was also a, not a pleasant experience. Yeah, the stuff going by on the windows, like flashing. Um, did you pull something down? You pulled your hoodie down over your eyes for a while. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't so good. It was too late by then. Yeah, the subway was super screechy. It sounded like there were subway rats dying. It was a problem. And then again, people, and also it was kind of rocky. It wasn't pleasant on the vestibular system. By the time we got off the subway, she had to hold on to my arm for balance to walk. And then we had to walk a couple blocks to where the singing was. All in all, would not recommend the subway. It was on her bucket list of like, I'm in New York City. I'd like to ride the subway. So in retrospect, we would have said, let's sing and let you do your choir performance first and Mm -hmm. then ride the subway on the way home. Yeah, because the story isn't even over because I got up there to perform and I'm under these hot stage lights in a church with fabulous acoustics. It's it was glorious. And I felt like I was going to puke. I was like, these nice people have let us sing in their church and I'm about to puke all over their floors. (laughs) and um so yeah we were singing i was uh within like 30 seconds i was lip syncing because i knew that if i actually started singing like i would pass out even after lip syncing like two minutes in i think it might have been like one or two songs in i started getting really lightheaded and like lots of pain lots of nausea and then i started blacking out so i sat down and so i just sat down for the rest of the song did some breathing stood back up started singing again, started blacking out again, sat back down again. And I had to sit down like in the back for the rest of the performance, because if I tried to stand, like I, bad things would happen. I was sitting in the audience and watching my daughter on the back row disappear. And I'm like, Oh crap. Like did she pass out and get another concussion or anyway, yeah. I was able to go back and find her and she was okay. I could see that she was seated and <laughs> fine, but she got a picture. <laughs> <laughs> not you give me a picture i remember that <laughs> oh man but it makes sense now that you're taught like i didn't realize it was because it was after that subway experience so yes i think your yeah. advice of doing the other things first before you try the experiment of a subway is wise wise advice there bethany mm-hmm. one of the things that i think is maybe good for listeners to know is that this trip she was going on was very scheduled like they we were able to get a copy of the schedule and the itinerary to see when they were going to be at certain places and what this what everybody was supposed to be doing and as i when i got that itinerary initially it was so overwhelming cuz i i looked at it and they're just booked back to back all day long and so one of the things we did before we even went on the trip is we had conversations about what do you really want mm-hmm. out of this trip and so Ashley had decided she really wanted to sing with the choir. It was a choir trip and she wanted to sing in those performances. And they were singing nearly every day. Yeah. And then the other thing she really wanted to do was go to the musicals in New York City. Mm-hmm. And so based on what her priorities were, we eliminated lots of things mm-hmm. from what the other people were doing. Yeah. Yes, I, I think that's so wise and such uh, a really good point to make. Thank you for bringing that out because I think, you know, if people are going on a, a pre scheduled tour kind of thing where it's already, yeah, like the schedule's there, then they can find out what it is ahead of time and plan accordingly based on what their priorities and their desires are. I think that's such a good point. And if you are the one planning your own trip, then you can, yeah, make sure that you're scheduling in these rest breaks or like the times where, like, uh, arranging things so that it makes sense based on your symptoms and fatigue and all of that. So such a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. And one other thing that I wanted to bring out as well that you mentioned with the subway, um, another another good <laughs> reason or, or way of somebody that 
reason to have a support person and way that a support person can help is by being an advocate. Like you said, like you, you probably wouldn't have, or I don't know if you felt like you could have asked for somebody to move, but mom could do that for you. So I think that's, that's uh, really important. That was a huge help through all the trip because Mm -hmm. I have problems with brain fog all the time. And I have a very hard time advocating for myself and stating my needs, even with mom. And so to have someone to do it for me is really, really life-saving. Yeah. Well, and helpful that she knows you and can see sometimes probably before you can, (laughs) what is, what's going on, what you might need. Yeah. She can read my symptoms when I have brain fog and can't read my own symptoms. Mom can read them for me. Sometimes she can't read my mind, but she can read my symptoms like, oh, you're tipsy or like you're taking a long time to answer questions or like you're zoning out or like, I don't know. I'm just, those are good ones. Those are good ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did have to have a conversation about like hearing protection and like, cause. Can we talk about hearing protection for a few minutes? Let's do that. Cause I saw, I I have a note on here that you guys brought seven pairs of hearing protection. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And all seven of them do a different job. Yep. Okay. Yes, please. Let's talk about that. This is going to be valuable for people. Okay. So the first set and the one that I use the most are my noise canceling headphones. So that those are like large over the ear headphones. I sent you some emails today, Bethany, with yes. links so that you could have those. But it does in the they show cost notes. about three hundred and fifty bucks on Amazon, and they so they're. That, I thought that's pretty pricey. I wanted that anyway. It's more than I wanted to pay for hearing protection. But tell us all about them, Ashley. Yeah, because she loves them. They're they're amazing. Um, <laughs> for three hundred bucks, they better be. Um, <laughs> but like. No, you can get it. They come with an app that you get and you can adjust. They automatically adjust the noise cancellation levels to like your environment. And that was amazing for New York because from stepping from like it's just an Uber car. It's a noisy city. It's a noisy city from stepping into the from the Uber car to the outside world. Like you're hit with a whole bunch of noise and I don't want to pull out my phone and manually adjust my like hearing protection every time I have to step out of an Uber car or out of a building or like adjust it just every time the noise changes, which is a lot Mm -hmm. Um, to have it like automatically adjust is just amazing. However, uh, it automatically turns off if I talk. So this made communication hard, obviously. And mom would be like, are you okay? And I nodded. She wouldn't believe me because when I like can't talk, that's like a symptom of like your balance is going out. Like, that means we need to get you to rest, but I was actually fine. So we had to have a conversation like, yeah, uh, every time. That's interesting. Once I realized that that was the case. I just s- mostly stopped talking with her during that uh-huh. excursion, wherever it was. Mm-hmm. And then we went back to the hotel. She rested. And then once she was up after resting, then I was like, hey, let's talk about your hearing protection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And so. At another time, and I think we did that while we were walking. I, I was think like, so too. Because it was a quieter place. I was able to say, hey, I don't understand, like, how much can I talk? How much can you respond? Mm-hmm. And we came up with a few hand signals so that she could still communicate and I could get the information I was looking for out of her. But she didn't have to speak and have the noise cancellation shut down. Yeah. yeah. And that was a really good idea on your part. You, you were the one that brought that up because it didn't even cross my mind. I, <laughs> turns out i like to figure out what you need so having a system was helpful yeah it's <laughs> brilliant i love it all right awesome uh, what other what other hearing, hearing protection things would you uh, i mentioned before at the airport that i had big bulky gun range quality hearing protection those That's, just block out all sound yeah, that, that, was not, that was different than the than the noise canceling headphones that you were just talking about yeah the noise canceling headphones try to block out background noises. And when you're trying to function and have a life, they are like amazing. Gun range hearing protection, like it's really hard to have a life. Because you can't hear and you, you can't, can't hear. You can't. When you speak, you talk too loud because you can't hear your own voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, when you bl- want to block out all the noise on an airplane or all of the noise in New York City as we're walking down the street, then those were a good option at times. Yeah. I had three different sets of loop earring, loop hearing protection, not earrings. Sorry, I don't know why I keep saying that. My ears aren't even pierced. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so loop is a brand 
of uh, of hearing protection, and they I'm kind of sold on them. They they sell like different levels of hearing protection, and they're small and low profile, so they can fit in your ear, and they kind of look like ear jewelry instead of looking like, hey, I have hearing protection on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think the three that I had, there's one that's supposed to muffle, like, all sound. Um, there's There was an engage, which is supposed to muffle background noise, but still allow you to be able to talk to people and hear what they're saying. Dark magic, I know. I don't know how it works. I just know that it does. <laughs> um, and then there was an engage plus. And I think you eventually wanted to use hearing protection, too, because it was just that loud. Yeah, New York's a really loud place. So I started, we have a lot of loop hearing protection around. but And, and sometimes I borrow lashes. I'm like, hey, hand me some hearing protection you're not using. Mm-hmm. So as we were walking down the streets of New much. York City, or mm-hmm. as we were in a performance and there was loud clapping, then I would pop them into. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, and then the other one that you have is the ones that you use in choir. Yes. I don't know how to describe these. They're like like earbuds, but and they're plastic, but they've got like a hole down the center and it's supposed to help tone down like harder noises like pianos, organs, stuff. My choir teacher is actually going deaf, that's why he had to retire. And so he would bang on the piano like like yeah, like he was a percussion student. I don't know. But like he, he was very, very. <laughs> this kind is called flare. And it's like a low profile goes in the ear. But instead of blocking off the hearing canal, there's actually a hole so that the sound waves can still travel into the ear. But some of the sound waves get blocked. So when I bought these, they were advertised as like people who go to restaurants and the clinking of dishes on plates is a hard sound, which it is for Ashley too. Mm-hmm. This is a type of hearing protection that people would use in those scenarios. So when Ashley would go to choir and she needed to be able to hear herself sing and she needed to hear the people around her sing. but And that- I needed volume control, which you don't get with, like loop hearing protection does it a little bit, but like it muffles so much and you can't volume control well with any sort of hearing protection in. And this hearing protection, I forgot what it was called already. Flare. Flare was the exception. And so it made it so I could go to choir class. It made it so I could perform. Like, it was really, it was really good. Awesome. That's Flare Audio and the Calmer brand specifically, right? I think. That, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. yeah. I remember uh-huh. um, that's been mentioned on this podcast before. Taya James uh, talked about it too, because that, yeah, it's a it's a helpful one. So we'll we'll definitely put the link for that in the show notes. So thank you for, for sharing that, guys. Oh, and then I forgot you also had your earbuds, which yes. isn't entirely hearing protection. But tell them what you did did with earbuds. So I don't know if you've talked about the app Brainwaves on this podcast, a little but, bit, it, but yeah, yeah uh, it basically helps your brain go back into a calmer state of mind and so it reduces pain a lot reduces headaches and you just listen it to it through some sort of electronic headphones or earbuds and so i brought it so that i could have my gun range hearing protection on and then slip these earbuds underneath it and do brainwaves at the same time without mm-hmm. having so i could be at the airport and with stuff over my eyes and brainwaves running under my gun range hearing protection just to try to de-stim and it made de-stimming in an airport possible mm. wasn't mm. the most effective be- de-stim but it was better than nothing at all yeah and i don't do it that way a lot because they poked me uh, like in the ears because the hearing protect the gun range hearing protection is so tight mm. that it pressed them into my head a little bit but uh the gains but the gain was worth it so yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Very good to know. And yes, the brainwaves is something we've mentioned before and it is really helpful for yeah headaches and helping people get to sleep and all the things that can be a very, very effective way of de-stimming. Um, and yeah, so thank you for sharing that. And that's cool to know that you can combine it with other things and it can be really helpful even, even in New York City. Awesome. That's okay. So good. So such helpful information about the hearing protection. You are a pro at that now. And so I think that <laughs> that is very valuable, very valuable information. Um, okay. What else? Yes. What else do we have? Let guys? Me talk about temperature control. Oh, mm. yes. Yes. 
we thought we had planned well for the weather. And then, you know, sometimes it surprises you. Do you want to talk yeah. about this, Ashley? Uh, so New York City is a lot colder than it is here. And it was spring. And we actually got some pretty warm weather for New York City. But um, there were some really cold days. And so uh, well, we ended up doing mom being the awesome outdoorsy person that she is, has a t- brought uh, an emergency blanket. You know, those like, they look like tinfoil. <laughs> and they fold down to like the size of a three by five card. Yeah. So yeah. it allowed me to bring a blanket, but not have it take up my entire bag. Uh, really? And not be heavy. And it was also more waterproof. Like, yeah. Uh, super embarrassing. Not cool. <laughs> but uh, I, I like did not care. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, I gave up on cool a long time ago. <laughs> we ended up riding out to the Statue Statue of Liberty on a ferry, and the ferry was really loud, and the temperatures were really cold, and so we ended up going on the ferry like there was a roof level, and so that was super cold, but it was quieter because everything wasn't echoey inside, and they had benches up there, so I didn't have to stand. So we were up there and wrapped she and I both together in this lovely tinfoil blanket. <laughs> I love but it. it kept her warm. And regulating temperature allows her to use her, her energy yeah. for other things. If mm-hmm. she gets too hot or too cold, then it can sap her of her ability to maintain doing other things. Yeah. So we also bought her a winter hat there because she couldn't find the one that she had packed and it was getting in the way. She had a beanie that had a pom pom on the top and then she couldn't put her hearing protection over it. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, adding a hat and an emergency blanket was and then kind I of had good. My coat. Yeah. I also purchased really lightweight camp chairs from REI, mm-hmm. like a really high quality. It was a camp chair that was like two pounds or something. So that when we went places, if there wasn't a place for her to sit, I could pop that thing open and assemble the thing so that she could have a place where she could sit down so she could conserve her energy for other things. Right. Yes. And having it be lightweight was really nifty because I'm not a really great Sherpa. I'm not a Mount Everest Sherpa. I'm just a <laughs> concussion surf Sherpa. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's such oh, such good ideas. So, so brilliant. Um, I'm curious if it had been a summertime trip and there, you were concerned about being too hot, do you have tricks or tips that you recommend for managing? Oh, we're actually going to Nauvoo this summer and it's going to be hot there and we haven't I know. Oh, I have. Ashley hasn't thought about it yet, but I promise you I've been working on it. I I (laughs) didn't realize that Nauvoo would be muggy and hot until mom told me. And I mentioned it to someone else and they're like, oh, you're in for a really hot, humid time. So I'm going to bring a shade tent that we can set up so there will be some shade to rest in because a lot of the stuff we'll do is is outdoors. Mm. And there's, there's, we haven't tested this stuff, so I don't know. I, I can't vouch for it yet, but there's a neck fan. It looks like a necklace that goes around the back of your neck oh, and nice. around to the front, and then it just blows air up onto your face. <laughs> and I don't know if it works or not, but I purchased one, and it's still in the box, and nobody cares about it enough to even open the box and oh, try it so out. sad. It's terrible. Well, now that you've said it, I'm going to care. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's some, like, cooling rags where mm. you can... Yeah. Oh. There's cooling rags that you can dip in water and then wrap them around your neck so that you get some evaporation. Mm-hmm. Which may or may not happen have... in the muggy. <laughs> it might not. Have That's what I was thinking. No, it might work great in Utah, but maybe not so well in a humid environment. It's not even supposed to get your clothes wet. Hmm. It's some special fabric that doesn't get your clothes wet, but is supposed to give you some evaporative cooling. Cool. Don't know how that's going to work. We plan to bring ice packs and cold water. Yeah. Like ice in the water bottles Mm -hmm. and like an ice pack in a cooler that we would pack in the morning so that when we're out in the outdoor spaces, you could pull, you know, those Velcro ice packs that you can strap on around an injured knee or an injured back and they can Velcro. I've used those actually as a, uh, what's the word? When I first, yeah, grounding. When I first did concerts and I couldn't take the stage lights and the noise and like I had vestibular issues, I would use those ice packs as grounding when I was walking on and off the stage so that I wouldn't fall down the riser stairs. (laughs) So that's the 
uh, for grounding. I don't understand. Basically, uh, with my vestibular issues, my legs start going numb. The ice pack was a really good and healthy way to be able to feel something and have a focal point like, oh, my knee's right there. Like, oh. I needed a reminder of, like, where my knee was. And based on where my knee was and where the ice pack was, I could kind of figure out where the rest of my limbs were and use that so that I wouldn't trip and fall down the riser stairs or trip on the stairs up or trip on my long, lovely choir dress or anything else so the fun part that needs to be added is she would put the ice pack strapped around her upper thigh so that her dress would cover it Mm -hmm. so no one even knew that's so fascinating and cool thank you for sharing that (laughs) definitely that have thought of that so that is really really interesting a couple other ideas that i was just thinking as for like the heat thing you know those umbrella hats (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, umbrella. See, you got your shade there. That would be that's cool. I think, right? <laughs> we're going for cool here. But also, I was we were at a like a kids activity outdoor thing the other day, and people, some of the leaders had brought just like like a, just a, a little spray bottle, and they were using that as like a mister for kids. So they were like just spraying, you know, on the like on the mist setting, not the not the spray your cat setting. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, they actually as have as the evaporative book. cooling option. They have the fan attachment too. And I was going to buy them and have them shipped to the Airbnb that we're staying at. So I don't have to drive them from Utah where we live the <laughs> 28 hours and have them survive the drive. So mm-hmm. yeah, cool. some of the stuff that we're going to do, I'll just have shipped to that place. Okay. All right. Well, I like it. We'll have to hear. We're really lucky to have Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. And to be able to have stuff shipped like that, that's, that's fancy. It is. Yeah. It is indeed. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you. I wouldn't even have thought to ask about temperature control. So that's good tips for both the heating and the cooling side of things. Anything else that we missed on that that you want to make sure we bring up? Oh, I brought gloves, but other than that. Helpful. So, so helpful. Great. What else you got for us guys? <laughs> I'm just going to let you run this show. <laughs> So one of Ashley's prior, Ashley wanted to sing at the choir. And then in New York City, she wanted to see some musicals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So attending musicals is a tricky event because there's lots of people and lots of noise and lots of crowd applause. Is the it acoustic really- are amazing, which is a plus and a minus because mm-hmm. now every noise, instead of hearing it once, I get to hear it three times. So, yeah. <laughs> And then the duration of the musical with all that stimuli was too long for her to actually make it through. So we wanted her to have a rest break during the musical. Problem is, in a crowded theater, there's not really a quiet spot. So, But what, if you have a Sherpa. If you've got a Sherpa, things work out. <laughs> um, Mom would, before the musical started, we would show up barely on time. like So that we would have to spend the least amount of time humanly possible in that crowded area. Mm. And then she would find, oh yeah, she would find an usher. And she would track them down. She'd use all the special words like TBI, disability. Uh, we need a quiet spot for her to de-stem. And then they would find somewhere that worked, which is nice. Normally when I go to plays here, I go into a room that's unlocked and I may or may not be allowed into and just de-stem there. So then during intermission, we would go to that place, which wasn't always very, very quiet, but it was quieter. She could put on her headphones, put on brainwaves, and have some time to de-stim while her Sherpa listened for when the musical was about to restart so that I could signal her and say, hey, it's mm-hmm. starting and we can go back in. Mm-hmm. So intermission is when you usually did that? Yeah. yeah. And then we would also go back after the musical to de-stim before the walk home. The walks in New York City are visually overstimulating. There are so many billboards and signs and cars and people and just lots of buildings flashing by. Um, and at night, the streets smell like weed. So if anyone is has, like, smell sensitivity, that's a, that's a thing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> there. Yeah. Yes. I remember you saying that, uh, and this was super interesting to me, you mentioned that in the rain, it was a little bit easier. It was, like, better. Yeah. Can you guess why that was? The rain helped drown out some of the city noise. The rain also scared lots of people inside. So, like, the streets were less busy. And then the umbrellas. Yeah, the umbrellas helped block views. People were walking faster, which made it so that our time that we were forced out on the streets was less. 
it also meant that we had to walk faster, so it was kind of a double-bladed sword that way. Oh, I thought the sea of umbrellas would be visually disturbing, but she said that the umbrella over her head actually blocked out some of the visual stimuli. Yeah. And it's actually to see a bunch it's actually easier to see a bunch of umbrellas moving instead of a bunch of little people's heads moving. Mm. Like that's actually easier on my eyes. You said that the people were more predictable as well, which I thought was interesting. Like Oh yeah, yeah. They were. Yeah. Was it just they were like gonna be moving in a certain direction or like trying to stay yeah. out of the way as much? Well, you could tell when there was a puddle because people would walk around it and also um they like huddled together more and like they were going faster and like more direct. They weren't like meandering as much mm-hmm. as they normally do. Uh, all the homeless high people weren't outside. They're always unpredictable. That makes sense. And you also mentioned that the cars slowed down too. So that was a little mm-hmm. bit more helpful too. So yeah. maybe not yeah. as fast moving things. It was cold and it was wet, but uh, I. And my shoes had holes on in them. I did not expect it to rain, although I probably should have, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just thought, I thought that was really an interesting, interesting, mm-hmm. point, but excellent. Anything else about the shows or, or somebody was going to go to a concert or something? Any like re- recommendations there? She would sometimes bring double hearing protection. She'd wear low profile hearing protection and then put her bigger over the top. I think I did that every time I went to a show. And you could still hear everything okay? <laughs> it was that loud. Well, I take it out during the show because I'm in New York City. There's live music. Like, I'm not going to miss that. She used the double hearing protection, like, walking in the streets on the way to there. Okay. And then... Um, Sitting in the audience waiting for the show to start. If there was a super loud part of the show, I'd put in hearing protection. And like, then during the applause, she would always pop some kind of hearing protection yeah. on. I'd have my headphones that I'd flip on and off as the applause subsided but yeah during the end of the song i was always like reaching up preparing and then sometimes i'd even cut it off short which is sad but passing out is sadder so (laughs) so she didn't use double hearing protection during the show but in the pre-show post-show intermission yeah and then she'd pick her favorite hearing protections to have available during the show yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Very helpful. Okay, thank you. Very helpful. What else? What else you got for us? That's the major points. We could talk about, I mean, we carried a lot more stuff. Ashley always had food and water with her, and I always had backup food and water mm-hmm. in case she didn't. And then I was carrying things like chairs. We carried extra stuff for body temperature control, you know, an extra jacket just in case. I would watch the other people coming and going that were in our group and they were carrying like nothing. And Ashley and I always had a backpack because of, we wanted to have the stuff that we needed. So yeah, we spent more money because we were taking Ubers when other people were using tr- public transportation. There was extra money for food because you want food. Like when she needed actual nourishment food, something better than granola bars and protein bars or whatever, mm-hmm. then, you know, sometimes you just pick whatever's close rather than shop around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Talked about a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just so, so helpful. My notes, but I don't see anything that we earmarked as. Yeah. Maybe talking about the central park resting before the airplane. Cause that was a little on the. Tell about that then. Okay. Were you going to say something, Bethany? Or- yeah. Well, that was actually on the list of things I was going to say. I have, I have my list of what we talked about when you guys got back that we, we might find some in, in there, but yes, you talked about how central park revived you. So let, yes. let's talk about nature and, and including that <laughs> in a trip like this. Cause I think that's great. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it was our last day. We had checked out of the hotel and our flight was in a couple of hours. And I think we had sung at some church and then we went, basically, we had a bunch of hours with nothing to do and no hotel to de in and a very, very long airplane flight ahead of us. So we had to choose an activity that wasn't draining and that would have a quiet spot in New York City. And so most buildings were out, most public museums, anything. We ended up choosing Central Park because there were a bunch of trees around it and it could like block out some noise and it was in nature and it was a nice day. It wasn't wet. 
And so we went, we found like a basin-y part that kind of went below the rest. And then I laid down, we had our pillows for the flight. That was going to be 12 hours. And I did bring waves for, I don't know how long. She ended up just laying down in Central Park for, I bet, 20 or 30 minutes. So she laid down on the ground, pillows on the neck. We took a shirt and put it over her eyes to block out the any visual, like make it a darker spot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I was there to stand guard and make sure that she was not a target for predators. And so that was a really great rest. That was a, a nice de-stem rest. And then we got up and walked around Central Park. And Ashley, the animal lover, oh. <laughs> Ashley, the animal charmer, made a few friends. I, I did. We fed some birds. We fed them cornbread, stale cornbread. There were turtles. As we left Central Park after she had done her done her resting, and then we we probably walked around for 40 minutes or an mm-hmm. hour or something. And it was in and nature. And she was revived. Yeah. Like she was perkier. But that time in nature was super reviving for her. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like the, the rest of New York. Anytime she stepped out, her timer went down and she had less and less time to exist. Mm-hmm. But in Central Park, it's like her battery got charged even more. So that was that was really nice. We called out the dopamine effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, I think that's beautiful. And I love it. And there is definitely like nature. Nature is healing. It is a, it's important. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, I, I love that point just as, you know, if people are planning a trip, like try, try to spend some time in nature. I think that could be reviving. And yeah, like you said, it perked her up more. So I, I, I think that's so great. So, so great. One thing we haven't really specified is we did, we planned rest breaks. Yeah. They didn't happen accidentally. They were part of the plan from the get go. And so her day usually consisted of singing with the choir and then a rest break back at the hotel, and then doing some activity in the evening, like a musical, and then a rest break. And she could basically do two activities per day, and that's what her days looked like. Yeah. As her Sherpa, I would get her settled in the hotel, and then I'd go take off and go see some New York. Once mm-hmm. I knew she was safe and fed and watered, <laughs> and yeah. resting, then I would go do, you know, maybe meet up with the other group, or maybe go figure out how to ride the subway can since I missed the group tutorial or whatever. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Love that. Yeah. And I think that is a really important point is it, it needs to be intentional. Like you, you plan it ahead and take those rest breaks when you need it, like be intentional and proactive about that. It will allow you to be able to do the things that you want to do and that are the most important to you. So I think that's such a good, good example and really important, um, important point. There were, there's, let me just like go through my notes here really fast to see if there's anything okay. that we want to make sure. Oh, things that you mentioned that were surprising. And again, I think just having, you know, for people to be aware of and consider and maybe help family members or friends understand a little bit more that these are things that people deal with. I'm just going to mention a few of the things that you mentioned were challenging that um, you may or may not have anticipated, but like the the cars, like I think you mentioned a few of these, but the cars driving by the lights flashing from that and the sunlight off of the buildings. You said that the cars were honking like every eight seconds. <laughs> there were yeah. planes that would fly by, ambulances, sirens, like in a big city, you get all of that. <laughs> and those things can be challenging. Let me see the, uh, you talked about walking arm in arm for balance. We did that most of the time as she and I would just be arm in arm because mm-hmm. she had double hearing protection. And my guy, my job as the Sherpa was to guide her and help find a pathway. Mm-hmm. And so if we were arm in arm, then I didn't have to speak and cancel out her noise canceling headphones. Mm. She could just. Yeah. I was her seeing eye dog and a Sherpa. Oh, yeah. You could put that on your um, bio. Too. Yeah. We're, we'll add seeing eye dog to my bio. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Excellent. Um, something that was interesting or that you brought out, you know, Friends were, uh, sometimes there was a, like a friend there and you, you didn't want to be weird. So you didn't say anything. I think that's, uh, I don't remember exactly what you're talking about, like in what instance that was, but I think that's something to be aware of too. If you're traveling with a group, if you have your Sherpa, <laughs> your person who knows um, what's going on, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that, I don't know, there situations can still come up where you, you feel like you need to not 
advocate for yourself or, or I don't know, just do you have any thoughts or advice on managing the group dynamics when you're with other people? There were some times when I would intervene. Maybe we were walking with a friend and the friend was trying to have a conversation with her. And then I would say to the friend, when she responds to your question, then it gets rid of her noise cancellation. And then the, the sound hurts her ears. So she doesn't talk really well when we're out in the city. Mm-hmm. So I would sometimes intervene. And sometimes you'd just bite the bullet and take the pain to like try and be social, to try to be socially appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. I did that a lot. Most of the time I hung out with you for that reason. And because I like your company, obviously. Love <laughs> <company. laughs> people really just didn't understand. Like yeah. the people in the group, I decided that as Ashley's Sherpa, my job was to be her Sherpa. My job was not to educate the other people in the group about concussions. Yeah. Um, and if someone asked, sometimes I'd explain and sometimes I wouldn't. So, I mean, I'd like to think that the world is a better place and people know more about th- that's not the goal of that trip. The goal of that trip was to help actually succeed, not to help people understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fair. It's hard with her friends because they really don't get her. No, they don't. <laughs> and so they'll say, Hey, let's all play a game. And they suggest a game that is really not a good like concussion game. It's like, Hey, everybody has an Elias name. And then we have to think of three things to, like, is it a, it's a heavy brain game. Very, mm-hmm. lots of cognitive work with lots of people, lots of noise. Yeah. And Ashley said to those friends who all know her and have grown up with her, like, she's been friends with these guys for a long time. And she said, hey, I can't play that game. And they said, oh, just give it a try. You'll catch on. Yeah. I think my exact words were, guys, this game will be physically painful for my concussion. It will hurt me. Can we please play something else? And they said. Oh, just give it a try. You'll catch on. Yeah. They said, I know it seems tricky at first, but it'll make sense later on. Like, they didn't get it. They didn't. Sand. They did not comprehend. I was like, no, it makes sense. I know exactly what I'm getting into. It's going to hurt me. Mm. And yeah. So did the trick have- with friends is they just really don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. With that one, she walked away Yeah. and called me to come pick her up because she hadn't driven her own car. Yeah. It's good to have a Sherpa. Yes. <laughs> and Oral sure. of the story. <laughs> yes, right. That's yeah, no, that's that's fair. I one one other thing here you mentioned um was the dehydration. I just want to throw this out there. You mentioned a few times making sure that you're watered, but you said you nearly passed out a couple of times from not, like and I don't know if that was because you were dehydrated or what, but there's that's that's very important as people are planning. Well, that was the same time on the subway. That day on the subway, I was dehydrated when from the get-go. Uh, um, normally, up until that point, I had drank like half a bottle of water before any excursion. And that day, I don't know if I woke up late or something, but I remember vividly that I was very dehydrated and my water bottle was almost empty. When we got there, I forgot to refill it. And so by the time I, like, after the subway, like, all I wanted was water and that was all I could think about. Mm. Other than, you know, being in pain. But um. <laughs> I think I asked for some of mom's and she gave me some, but I got up on the stage. I had no water. So yeah, I was dehydrated that day as well. So hydration, hydration is really important. Yeah. If nothing else, it will make it so that your consequences are less painful. Yes. Well, and uh, yeah. it might make it so that you have to run to the bathroom and then you get a little bit of a alone time maybe. So that could be good too, right? <laughs> yeah. No, prioritize water. It's so important. <laughs> yes. You guys are amazing. This was, I think, really, like, you're a wealth of information. <laughs> very, very helpful <laughs> thank you. Um, lived experience here. So thank you so much for sharing that. Is there anything that you wanted to throw out there that we didn't mention? Or as far as, you know, what family members or friends can, su- how they can support someone or devices or tools or anything that we yeah. didn't I mention? think the biggest thing for family and friends is, like, believe them. Like if they say that they're having a symptom, like saying that is work and saying that is hard for them, like believe them. Like they're not, I mean, maybe in some cases they're lying to you, but like they, they aren't. (laughs) So. (laughs) Yeah. That is good advice. And something that 
gets brought up here quite a bit. So uh, that's meaningful. And I'm so grateful that you've got a mama that believes you. <laughs> she, yeah, me too. she is a gem. <laughs> Every day. Me too. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, seriously, thank you so much, you guys, for all of this information. I really do think it's going to be really valuable for people as they're considering going on a trip somewhere because you want to live your life. <laughs> this is important. And so figuring out how to do it and and be able to get the most out of it is so, so valuable. So thank you. Maybe one other thought yeah. is we've done other trips that have taken far less work to plan because we plan them around the symptoms. Mm-hmm. We choose not to go to New York City, like the loudest city in the world. We go to like Moab in the middle of nowhere. Like yeah. we go to places that are, are quieter places in general and then places where we can get out into nature. Mm-hmm. And so when we plan the trip around what we actually can do, then we end up doing being able to do a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. In New York, I was able to do two activities a day. When we go on trips normally, I could do a lot more than that. Yeah. And so... Okay. That's encouraging. I that, thank you for bringing that up. I do feel like yeah, that is thank you. That, that is very good. Yeah, not every trip is like that. Thank goodness. Yes. Yes. Excellent. All right. Oh, the other okay. thing that we one more thing. Uh, yeah. The other thing that I did after New York is I planned to miss extra days of school. I planned to be wiped out after that. I think I missed two days after school. Mm. Two days of school after that trip, just because I did not have the energy. And so yeah, when I was planning like okay, this is how much homework I need to get done in advance. Or like that was, that was part of the process, like planning extra rest days afterwards. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's so valuable as well. You guys, man, <laughs> so much, so much good yeah. stuff. Okay, now you can wrap up. <laughs> now. We can wrap up. Well, I just, I just want to say thank you again, because really this is like, you guys have really good experience and really valuable things to share. So thank you. And in behalf of all of the people listening who will be benefiting from this, thank you. <laughs> um, and we'll, we will chat again. <laughs> Thanks so much, you guys. Yeah, thank you, Bethany. This, this was good. I'm so glad you listened in today. I hope you have gained some helpful insights and inspiration regarding dealing with and recovering from concussions. My goal is to create more awareness and education about concussions and the fact that there is so much that can be done to improve life after someone has had one. Help me spread the message by liking, commenting, rating, and subscribing to this podcast and share it with others who would benefit from hearing it. There are more resources available on my website. And again, if you or someone you love would benefit from concussion coaching, sign up for a free consultation using the link in the show notes or at my website, www.theconcussioncoach.com. Thank you. See you next time and take good care of that amazing brain of yours.